salmon were right there. Okay, 500 to 1,000 salmon in one of these videos. So, you don't want to harvest salmon in your fishing pole. You're going to put water. That's what you use these uh, intros. When the man jump, you build it and take them. And after the salmon's done it, the women's job, you've got to prepare and smoke to get it ready. And of course, the government regulates these animals. You can't have them on at all hours of the day. You've got to get them off the beach, right? So what you do is the first step to do is... There's little air vents that are going to pop open, which will help the smoke penetrate. Bingo, okay. And after you do that, you put it up uh, to the rack. Okay, got it. Yeah, we don't like to put a dripping wet salmon directly over our smoke barrel. So the next step is just to place it out here on the air drying rack until it's done dripping, which will take about two hours. And then we'll rotate these fillets into the smokehouse and rotate them all around the smokehouse until the salmon becomes fully dehydrated. A fully dehydrated salmon weighs less than a pound, so it's very easy to carry on a dog sled. And this was very important to my family because we used to have a dog team of over 20 dogs, and those dogs acted as transportation. And each dog can eat one dehydrated salmon a day. So you can imagine how many salmon my family would have to harvest for the whole dog team for the whole winter's use. And that's not including the salmon that we harvest for ourselves. Yeah, you know, quickly, Josiah, tell us about the salmon you prepare for yourselves and how do you smoke it? What do you do differently? Well, when we prepare it for ourselves, we use the kings or the silvers. Instead of scoring the salmon, we'll cut the fillets into thin strips, like the ones you see on the left side of this air drying rack. Those are called salmon strips. We'll let them drip, and then my family will soak them in a brine of brown sugar, honey, and salt overnight, and then we rotate those strips into the smokehouse for only about four days until it's fully cooked, not fully dehydrated. It'll be a beef jerky texture, and we always use the alder wood, which is a very sweet wood. But what if we, if we were preparing it for the dogs, we would just use whatever's laying around because the dogs aren't too picky. <laughs> Kaziah, we really appreciate your time showing us the Chum Salmon. Tell us what our friends can expect when we come to shore. Your guides will be taking you around to three different stops. We'll be teaching you about our Athabascan Indian culture. And then after the tour, we'll stick around to answer any questions you may have. All right, thanks, Kaziah. We'll see you on shore in just a moment, okay? Thanks, Kaziah. Anabasi, thank you. Anabasi. Okay, folks, I'm going to ask for your help right now. This is a ceremony. 
ceremonial chief's coat. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and this is the traditional maiden's dress. These were both made with traditionally tan moose hide, like I just explained. These floral beadwork designs that you see are an Athabascan <clears throat> trademark and both have symbolic meanings to them. The flowers on the maiden's dress represent where this woman came from. So if you were to go into the village of this maiden, you'd find an abundance of the bluebells and the Alaska state flower, the forget-me-not. And the flowers on the chief's coat represent animal tracks. And that's in hopes of bringing this man good luck while he's out hunting and trapping. This large flower represents the track of the wolf, the lynx, and the rabbit. These are both trimmed with beaver fur, and these large buttons are made from cross sections of the moose antler. These small buttons are made from cross sections of the caribou antler. That's just another example of how everything is always used. We don't like to waste anything. And I'm sure you probably noticed my moccasins. These are also made by Dixie Alexander, and they have wild Alaska blueberries on them. And every summer, my grandmother and I go picking blueberries. So these represent my love for my grandma. But right now, we're going to move on to our next stop. Please follow me off to your left. Anabasi, thank you. <coughs> Hi there.